Hi everybody, here we have another excellent game by Mikhail Tal playing as Black. And this is from the uh, USSR Championship in 1957 and it's another great example of how he gets his nickname, the Magician from Riga. Okay, so his opponent opens d4, e6, c4, f5, a Dutch defence. Knights are developed, the bishop goes to e7, white prepares Fianchetto kingside. Tile castles. White does the same, and then we get Queen moving to e8, heading for a more promising square. Rook to e1, and then Queen to g6. And then if we look at the position, we can see that Black's Queen side is completely undeveloped, and his efforts have been concentrated on the King side. So that's an indication of where much of the action is going to take place. Now we see e4 which is an interesting move as it looks as though it can't be played but there's a nice little tactic here pawn takes knight takes recapture and a rook takes now that rook is a tempting bait but it cannot be taken because on queen takes e4 knight to h4 and the queen has got no escape but that was a known idea at the time so we get knight to c6 and the queen goes to e2 Bishop to f6. White develops his bishop. And then we get e5. Pawn takes and pawn takes. And Tal notes that this is quite a risky move. As that e5 pawn cannot be defended by any other pawns. And so could become a weakness. And White opens a d-file. Moves his bishop onto a better diagonal. And puts pressure on that pawn straight away. Bishop c3. And then we get... Bishop to f5, exploiting the rather unnatural position of the rook at this stage of the game. And then white, white's move pretty much force. Knight to h4, uh, forking queen into bishop. So bishop takes knight, and the rook goes to the h-file. So the rook, again, looks rather strangely placed on the h-file. But as we've seen a few moves, it can create a few threats from that position. So... Tal moves his rook over, defending the pawn. Queen to e3 and h6. We'll see the point about moving in a minute. White gains space on the queen side with b4. And then we get queen to f6. Having a point of h6 was to prepare g5, making life uncomfortable for that rook. And now Tal's opponent plays b5. And Tal drops his knight back to d8. So if the knight has to move, this bishop will be attacking pawn. So if the knight goes back to a square where it can defend that pawn from. And Tal could have played g5. But he didn't like the look of pawn takes bishop. Sacrificing the exchange. Pawn takes rook. Pawn takes pawn. When his queenside pawns become weak. And white's got this monster pawn on b7. Supported by the bishop and g2. So knight d8. And then bishop to d5 check. We move a king to h8. Now white sees a, a tactic here and plays f4. Putting more pressure on his e5 pawn. And the pawn is pinned against his queen. So if pawn takes we could get bishop takes queen. But white's idea here is that if pawn takes pawn. Queen takes rook. Rook takes. Bishop takes queen. And white's won the exchange. So what's Tal's response to this, pawn takes pawn. Now this uh, was probably a bit of a fright for white, as he suddenly realises that if he takes the rook, then queen to b6 check, and white is lost. So after that realisation, he moves his queen to d2. And it's at this point in his book, The Life and Games of Mikhail Tal, that he reveals his creative genius for attacking. Because he states... But here he wants to play rook to e1. We can see how black dominates the f-file. And that this f-file can be opened up easily. And that will make life difficult for his king. And Tal reckons that if he gets his rook to the back rank as well. Then it's going to be curtains for white. But obviously he can't play that just yet. We've got three pieces defending e1. Three white pieces. We could take with a rook. 
take with a queen and if the queen wasn't there we could take with a bishop but this is where we see some real tile magic okay so his queen is attacked queen to b6 check white plays bishop to d4 attacking the queen again and tal moves queen to g6 with threats on g3 so then we get queen takes f4 now notice if we did rook takes f4 tal would have played knight to e6 and white's going to have to give up one of his really good bishops so we get queen takes f4 and then there's a big threat by white here which shows how fragile Tal's king position is because if you played knight e6 in this position then rook takes h6 wins a queen because this g pawn is pinned by this bishop and if we had king to g8 just rook takes queen and this knight can't capture the queen on f4 because it's pinned by this bishop so after queen takes f4 Tal needs to meet this threat and defend a pawn on h6 and get out the pin with king to h7 so white plays queen takes c7 and he's a pawn up and these pawns look like they're going to fall at any moment and white's got two brilliantly placed bishops and we also have a threat on g7 so black's got to keep his king defend his queen defending that square but if we remember what tal said before about getting his rook to e1 if we look at the position now we notice that he's moved his bishop and the queen away from defending e1 there's only this rook on the back rank that's protecting that square now so that's two down one to go and tal accomplishes this with bishop to b1 A really nice move just taking white's rook out of the game and as tal says white is effectively a rook down now so if we look at this position if white was to play something like a4 allowing rook e1 the king does not have many squares king g2 96 threatening to check on f4 bishop takes and we can't take with a queen because otherwise queen would take g7 checkmate but after the rook takes white's in a whole lot of trouble his king hasn't got many squares to move to the e and the f files are dominated by the rook and the white squares these diagonals are weak Black's the only one with light squared bishop and moves like rook e2 check followed by bishop to e4 or f5 depending on where the king goes are going to be too much for white so white comes up with the good move bishop to e5 blocking the e-file and then we get knight to e6 bringing the knight into the action and we get queen to d6 hoping to exchange off some pieces and relieve the pressure Talvo plays queen to f5 now the knight can't be touched because we've got threat of queen f2 check king goes to the corner queen f1 mate so we get bishop to f4 blocking the f file and in this position Tal could have just played g5 but he didn't have much time left and didn't want to open his king up so instead he played knight to g5 then we saw queen to b4 which has a dual purpose of protecting e1 square and threatening to win this bishop so the bishop comes to this diagonal again restricting white's king and taking away white's defense of your free square so we've got knight f3 check threatened so we see a bishop exchange for rook takes and then we have rook to f1 and tile increases the pressure rook to e2 and the threat here is just knight to h3 check so if we had something if we were allowed to play that i will just get knight to h3 check and white's either got to give up his rook because if he plays king to the corner queen e4 is going to checkmate so white plays queen to d6 setting a little trap because if we had knight to h3 check now the rook would just capture and if the queen took queen d3 check and white is winning but Tao saw this of course and he just moves his rook out of danger and captures pawn at the same time so knight h3 check is again on the cards queen to d5 
defending the e4 square so the black queen can't check on that if the king goes to h1 and also desperately hoping that Tal will exchange the queens off but of course he doesn't queen to c2 and now white starts to run out of moves very quickly white plays c5 then we get rook to d8 deflecting a queen the queen can't take the rook because otherwise we'll get queen to g2 checkmate so puts the bishop in the way then rook to e8 and at this point Tao's opponent ran out of time and Tao won the game but this is already a completely one position as Tao points out there's no good defense to rook e1 for instance if we had c6 we get rook e1 and if the rook captures queen to f2 check king to h1 queen takes rook checkmate and back in the rook e1 position we've got the simple threat of rook takes rook king takes queen f2 checkmate and if white tried to defend the rook with rook to f4 we'll just have queen takes pawn checkmate so another very impressive game from Tao and the thing that I find absolutely incredible is the way Tao highlighted this rookie one move 13 moves ago in this position now whilst it wasn't the exact move that he was thinking of or it wasn't the exact position that he was thinking of Tao saw that rookie one would be a winning move for him in this position it looked absolutely impossible Tao made it possible in just a few moves White defended against it, but right at the end of the game, it was a threat of rookie one for White just had no defense for. So it's this kind of visionary ability that Tao had that made him such a formidable player and a real attacking genius. So there we go. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. And I hope you enjoyed the game. Thanks for watching.